Hello everyone, I'm Naval Yamul. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Master. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to create a compute in the Databricks. Actually, I'm using an AWS Databricks account here. So in my previous video, I have explained you how to create a AWS Databricks instance in the AWS account. So now, in this video, we are going to focus about the compute that is creating a very minimal all-purpose compute so when it comes to compute there are majorly two types of compute in databricks one is all-purpose compute and second is a job compute so in simple words all-purpose compute is used for your interactive environment your collaborative environment if you want to develop something you use all-purpose compute and job compute is basically used for automation so you have developed it and you want to automate that then we go for the job compute and you cannot go and create a job compute from this tab this tab will just show you all the job runs you can create a job compute by using a workflow jobs or the tlt that is delta live tables but you can create an all-purpose compute from this tab by just hitting on this create compute you can set up a policies so in the organization they always set up a policies so that you won't misuse the compute or you don't just spin the compute at any odd time so they set up a policies but now i have not set up any policies i'm going to show you how to create a lowest compute in your databricks environment so i'll just click on create compute and the moment i click on the create compute it's by default chosen as a multi-node so multi-node means you have one driver and you have n number of worker nodes and Databricks allows us to choose the auto scaling feature. You can see here at the bottom you have an auto scaling feature. So, this is so beautiful. It helps you to save a lot of cost. It can scale anyway between two worker nodes to maximum eight worker nodes. You can change that or you can just disable this and keep your worker nodes as fixed size. But the best practice says that you always enable this auto scaling feature so that the minimum worker nodes two are always active just in case if you are getting a more workload or you are getting a more volume of data your worker node would be increased from two to eight anyway between that so by default it uses a multi-node but you can switch it from multi-node to a single node so if you use a single node so as a name itself indicates single node will get only one driver and there are no worker nodes even though it's one driver you can choose the type of that driver node for example in this you can check you can go for the very minimal to the two cores with 16 gb so depending on the cores and the gbs you are choosing you will be costing depending on that so for example we have chosen two cores with 16 gb memory you are costing costing it between 1.04 dbu per hour so you can check the pricing on the AWS Databricks and you are using a premium account. You can exactly track how much DBU is equal to the dollars or in rupees. You can check that. But now let us keep it very minimal. You can go with two cores or you can go with four cores and so on. It's up to you. You can choose it between. There are so many options here. You can choose it. So now I'll keep it uh, memory optimized or you can go for the general or memory optimized or storage optimized it's up to you so uh, i'll take four cores that is a minimum requirement for my use case that would be 30 gb with four cores you can reduce the number of cores also so for my practice or for my development i'll use a four cores that will be sufficient but depending on the use case you can choose multi-node so single node is just for the light workloads but in development scenarios we generally go for the multi-node where we can also change the driver and the worker type node you can see here if i switch to multi-node you can choose the worker type like how many worker uh, like how many workers you want and in that worker how many uh, worker type you need like how many cores you need how much gb you need memory gb you need you can choose it from there and you can select the driver type as well you can keep it as worker same as a worker type but depending on the use case you can go for the higher worker driver type also but now i'll just switch it to the single node i'll keep the resources very very minimal 
So this is about the single node and the multi node. So now moving further, we have an access mode. So access mode means who all will be accessing this compute. So the compute name is novel EMLs cluster or the compute. I'll just click on this pencil and I'll just write it like data master. Okay. So I want uh, the compute name to be as my organization name. So I'll just write data master compute or you can just say all purpose compute, all purpose compute. And from here, I'll like, I want this compute to use it with others. Then I can switch it from single user to the shared. But remember the moment you click on shared, it throws you an error saying that, Hey, you cannot use a single node compute for shared access mode. So if you are sharing your compute with your teammates, with your colleagues, the minimum you have to choose is a multi node and you cannot work on the single node and the compute what I am creating it. I want to share it across my team members. So I'll keep it a multi node. I'll keep it a multi node. So multi node will have one driver and it can have one worker as also. Okay. So now I don't choose an auto scaling feature here. I'll just disable it and I'll keep the minimum worker as one. I'll keep it very low as one worker. So if you say that I want more, then you can go for enable auto scaling. Then you can go for minimum one and maximum two. This also will work. So this will keep your resources very minimal. Now I can switch it uh, access mode from single user to the shared. So now if I move it to the shared, it doesn't throw me any error. Now I can share my compute with my teammates or whoever is using this Databricks account. They can also use this compute that is data master compute. We all can collaboratively use this compute. So let me keep it multi node. Let me keep it as a shared. And now I'll keep a worker node worker type as four cores and 32 GB and you can check a quick summary here on the right side that it will be costing me anywhere around four to seven DB per hour. Okay. Then moving further, we have a performance. So it's all about the database runtime version. There are two types here. One is standard and second is ML. So if you're going for the machine learning applications, if you want to build a machine learning model, do an experiment, create a model, then we generally go for the machine learning. But my use case is to create a data engineering applications. I want to work on the ETL doing a lot of PySpark, Delta Lake, Acows, then I'll be using a standard. But the latest runtime version is 15.4 LTS. LTS stands for long term support. Now let me click on this 15.4. So in simple words, we are creating a compute. We are getting a machine from the AWS and in that we have a latest version of the Spark. The latest version is 3.5 Spark 3.5 and it has a Scala version of 2.12. So let us keep it as 15.4 LTS. It has a long term support like it support goes to up to two years. Okay. Then we have a next feature called a photon acceleration. So photon acceleration will help you to boost up your queries. If you are feeling that your queries are lagging behind or having some latency, it is just an add on that photon acceleration is written in C plus plus that will boost up your queries. But if it is an add on, obviously the cost of the compute will go higher. So now I want to keep my resources very minimal. I'll just disable this. And now if you have noticed it, it was charging me around four to seven DBU. I'll just show you. You can see it is four to seven DBU with photon, but I don't want to get a higher uh, cost. So I'll just disable this. And now the costing is around two to four DBU per hour. Okay. So this is the photon acceleration. Now moving further, I talked about the worker type. I talked about the driver type. Then yes, let us keep it as enable auto scaling. So anyway, I'll be using one driver and one worker every time. So I'll be getting four plus four, eight cores running every time with two machines. Just in case if all the cores have full or maybe it's uh, completely occupied, then your next worker node would spin up and it goes maximum two worker nodes only. Okay, so I'll just enable this and then we have a feature called terminate after 120 minutes. See, many beginners, many people feel that if your compute is on, are you charged? And the answer is yes, you are charged. Even though you are using it, you are not using it. If your compute is on, you are charged, you are charged. So 
we always try to minimize that compute so we use the termination time like a best practice is anywhere around 45 to 60 minutes let me keep it as 45 minutes so if i'm not doing any work in 45 minutes automatically your computes get terminated then once your compute gets turned off or it's terminated you won't be charged anything so make sure that to enable this by default it's 120 minutes you can keep it as low as 10 minutes also but we don't keep it as 10 minutes because anyway if you are writing some logic and so on it might take more than 10 minutes and if your compute goes on and if you are trying to spin it again i mean if you want to start it again it will take a long four to five minutes to start so the startup time is more in this compute but do not worry databricks also offers you a serverless compute serverless compute is you don't need to do all this databricks does care of you you just come to the serverless compute and you can just say that i want a serverless feature or a sql serverless and it starts in four to five seconds yeah you heard me right it just take four to five seconds so we have a serverless feature also in databricks but now we are talking about the all-purpose compute so the ideal time would be anywhere around 45 to 120 minutes so let me keep it as 45 minutes so these are the basic configurations if you want to go from some advanced options yes definitely you can go it and you can choose between the like do you want a on demand and the spot instances and so on so these are little bit advanced to save you a cost on the compute and then we set up some instances and if you have some spark configurations we can do it here with an environment variables and so on but now let me keep it simple i'll just do a multi node with one to two maximum worker nodes access mode i kept it shared because i want to share it across my organization across my team members and then a databricks runtime version i am using a latest one 15.4 i have enabled the auto scaling feature and also i have mentioned the termination after 45 minutes of inactivity my term my cluster good should terminate and i have disabled the photon acceleration means i don't want to boost up my queries in real time if you want to speed up your queries i recommend to use this photon acceleration okay so let me just hit on create compute and it might take three to four minutes to start the compute and once the compute starts then you can go to your workspace you can create a notebook and you can start working on this databricks so it will take a four to five minutes to spin this or to start this so meanwhile i'll just take a moment as i've told you at the start of the video when it comes to the compute there are two types all-purpose compute and the job compute but when it comes to analytics when it comes to databricks sql they offer a sql warehouses also you can see this we have a sql warehouses and by default we have one sql warehouse called serverless starter warehouse it was created by me that is by default and the size is small even you can go with the smaller size so let me show you just click on the sql warehouse and here you can go and pick a 2x small also so this uh, cluster size always reminds me as a t-shirt size it starts with your 2x x small small medium large excel 2 excel and so on the smallest you can get is 2x small so i'll just take us 2x small and you can give a name for this and here you get a feature called auto stop to minimum five minutes you can keep it as low as five minutes because if you are not using it it goes off in five minutes and if you want it back you can just spin it you can start it it takes only four to five seconds to start so and again here also we have that feature called auto scaling but you don't have the feature of how many cores how much memory and so on because it's serverless everything is taken care by the databricks and you don't need to worry about that so now let me just give a simple name here data master serverless i'll just say serverless serverless and let me just hit on create and the moment i click on create it's asking me the permissions yes obviously i'll set up some permissions i have to add my teammates and i'll set up the permissions here but now oh wow you can see here in few seconds your compute got started let me go to the all-purpose compute and you can see here your all-purpose compute is still running 
I mean, it's still about to run or start. It takes four to five minutes long, as I told you. But when you compare it with the serverless, it takes just four to five seconds to spin. I think it took less than four to five, I guess. So let me just stop it. Yeah, you can stop it in seconds and you can start it in seconds. You can see I've just started it. So maybe one, two, three, four, five seconds. It should start. Oh, cool. You can see it got started here. So this is about the serverless. Let me stop this. Let me stop this and let me go back to the compute. Let me pause this video for a few seconds and then once the compute starts, I'll come back. Okay, cool. This video might take a longer time, but yes, in one or two minutes, your all purpose compute would be started. So in this video, I have explained you how, uh, what is AWS compute and they, those are categorized into all purpose compute, job compute. And I have also explained you about the SQL warehouses. And I have explained you how to set up an all purpose compute. I explained you the difference between what is single node, multi node, and how to choose the worker type. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching again. Bye bye. Take care.